come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to our world of mystery and the macabre. The Romans called her Venus. The Greeks knew her as Aphrodite. To other ancient peoples, she was Ishtar, Isis, and Astarte. But whatever the name, she was always the same. The mysterious, passionate, voluptuous goddess of love. And sometimes, of death. You belong to her now. You made a vow to the statue. I was only joking. We were all only joking. Perhaps. But she took it seriously. But it's only a statue. It's the statue that stood in the shrine of the Temple of Venus. It is the Venus herself. But what does she want? She wants you. I didn't mean it. You saw it was all in fun. She wants you, Claude. She wants to love you. And then, as she's done so many times in the past, she'll kill you. Our mystery drama, The Venus de Il, was especially adapted from the Prosper Merrimé classic for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Who was it that said, Some men are born wise, others are more fortunate. They're born handsome. We commend to your attention the young Vicomte Claude Louis de Chaubert. At 38, who can count the hearts he has already broken? And who can even guess at the vast amount of golden francs he has already lost at such aristocratic pastimes as Baccarat, Vintetin, Chemin de Fer? But this is of small importance to our handsome hero. He has long ago learned that his true fortune is in his face. And so, on this evening, this intoxicatingly beautiful evening, in the spring of the year 1908, we find our Claude Louis in a luxurious casino on the coast of southern France. Bless your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And now, mesdames et messieurs, we play. Oh. And it is tres rouge, thirteen red. There, you see, it's always rouge when I bet noir. But how can you change horses in midstream? No, I have faith. Fifty thousand francs on the black. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Monsieur le Vicomte. About what? There can be no more credit. No credit? Call the manager. It was the manager himself who gave the order. Oh, I see. I am sorry, monsieur. Uh, Save my place at the table. Come in. Ah, Claude. Have a chair, my boy. Monsieur Armand, is this how you treat an old friend? We'll have a glass of champagne. Fabulous flavor. What is the meaning of this? Have a cigar. Just arrived from Havana. Have a chair. Have a glass of champagne. Have a cigar. I'm waiting to hear you offer me what I came in for. And what's that? Credit. Credit. Let me talk to you like a father. I can see where this is leading. No credit. Had you not come to see me, I would have gone to see you. Why? You owe this establishment one million francs. And? And there are those who will demand payment. Those who will take drastic steps. If payment is not forthcoming within the next few days. What are you talking about? My boy, we are now... How can I say this? Well, we are now organized. Organized? We are owned by a syndicate. And all debts must be collected. They will be collected by people who are known as enforcers, I think. Will you extend me credit or not? Claude, please listen. The syndicate has been through my books. You are in danger. You expect me to be frightened by these hoodlums? Claude, 
Give me some assurances that you can pay, or else please disappear for a while. I, uh, I have a document that will not only encourage you to extend credit, but will also satisfy the vultures who seem to be running your establishment. The document? Mm -hmm. I have here a letter from Mademoiselle Eloise Calvert. The heiress? Yes, the heiress. The wealthiest young lady in France. In which she says, among other things, My darling Claude, if you refuse to marry me, I don't think I care to live any longer. She says that? Now, I would assume that this should serve as a gilt-edged letter of credit. A document even stronger than the Bank of France. May I see the letter? If you insist. Mm. Fine. On the basis of this, your credit is unlimited. But make sure the engagement is announced within three or four days. Of course. And perhaps sooner. <laughs> Darling. Good morning, Eloise. Oh, it's only you, aren't we? I'm sorry you're disappointed. Oh, well, you're not bad. And if there were no Claude Louis, you might even do. Henri, have you seen him? He's probably still fast asleep. No, he promised to play tennis with me this morning. Well, then he'll be along. Uh, where did you get this amazing statue? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Monsieur Delon, who bought all that art for my father, my dear departed father, advised me to pick it up. It's fantastic. A bronze, eight-foot Venus. She should be worth more than the one at the Louvre. <laughs> at least this, this one has arms. Why do you place her here, at the entrance to your tennis court? Why not? We always have a crowd here. Why should she be lonesome? Do you know that in Greek and Roman times, our very town of Il had a temple sacred to Venus? Yes, right here. <laughs> well, now, how and why should I know a thing like that? And this was the great statue of Venus that stood in the shrine of the temple. Really? The same one? Look at the air of mystery that surrounds the face. This is a woman of many moods. And passions. Here comes Claude Louis. Good morning, Eloise. Hello, darling. And cousin Henri. Have you examined this statue, Claude? Great big girl, isn't she? She's uh, magnificent, too. The goddess of love. The fickle, jealous, unpredictable goddess of love. Well, I came down to play tennis. And I am ready for you. You're not really very good this morning. Well, wait till I warm up. <laughs> just, I'm just toying with you. You can hardly hit the ball. What will you do in the game? I'll tell you what it is, darling. Uh -huh. An excuse coming up. Make it good. Well, it's this ring. This ring I'm wearing. That big, ostentatious, vulgar now, ring. Now, now. It belonged to my father. Well, I never liked it. Uh, stop. Stop for a minute. I, I want to take it off. I, I can't grip the racket properly. Ah. Now, now, where can I put it? I don't have a pocket in these trousers. Why don't you just throw the ugly thing away? I'll buy you a new one. Oh, now, darling, it has a very sentimental value. Oh, I, I know a good place for it. Excuse me a minute. Where are you going? I'll, uh, I'll just put it on Miss Venus's finger. Oh, and I thought you came here to put a ring on my finger. No, no, Claude, no. No what? Don't do that. It's, uh... It's what? I was about to say blasphemy, but that's not really the word. Oh, Ari, what are you talking about? But it just doesn't seem right. After all, she is the goddess of love, and you can't... Yes? You're offering her your ring. Which means you're asking her to marry you. Do you have any idea what you're saying, Henri? That is, symbolically, of course. Eloise, is your cousin always like this? Well, he's um, a very deep person. Claude, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Don't put that ring on her finger. 
Why not? Ah. There we are. <laughs> it fits her perfectly. Looks good on her, too. All right. Now let's see if that ring really was what cramped your style, Claude. <laughs> let's see you get that one. Ah. Oh, dear. Nice. But you'll have to do it again. Watch out. You were better than last time, but still not good enough. Well, if all I did was play tennis all day... Why don't you? Uh-oh. It's going to come down any minute. Let's run for the house. We shouldn't be out here in the lightning. Hey, Henri, get my ring, will you? And, and meet us in the house, Henri. Come on, Claude. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, he's just standing Darling, there. Darling, it's going to pour any second. What's the matter with him? Henri! Eloise, is he all right? Well, let's go see. Henri? Henri? Henri, what are you staring at? Your... Your ring, Claude. Well, what about my ring? It won't come off her finger. What? Try it. Try it yourself. Just try to take it off. All right, I will. Please hurry, we'll be drenched. Ah, see what I mean, Claude? What does he mean, Claude? Well, this, this ring, my ring, for some reason. I, I, I can't seem to get it off her finger. What on earth are you talking about? Just, just take it off. Well, it, it seems to be stuck. Why? I don't know. Wait. Uh, why are we just standing around in the rain? Why won't this ring come off? I can't even move it. Well, you worry about it. I'm going into the house before I get soaked. Ari? Ari, why can't I get this ring off? Why? Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. The chef went out of his way for Claude. Oh, Ari... Why doesn't he ask me to marry him? Who? The chef? No, idiot, Claude. <laughs> he will. After all, he's penniless. Oh, now, that's not worthy of you. I'm... I'm sorry. Where is Claude? He's out on the tennis court. Now? It seems he still can't get his ring off that goddess's finger. I don't believe it. You want to go see? In this rain? No, thank you. Ah, oh, Claude. Oh, darling, look at you. You're dripping wet. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'll go right upstairs and change. What were you doing outside? Well, I, I know it sounds silly, but I was trying to get my ring off her finger. And did you? No, no. There could be a kind of secret spring, and it, it snapped, and it sort of curved her finger around it. I don't know what to do about it. Is it all right if I just leave it there? Oh, I never liked that ring. If the statue wants it that badly, let her have it. Did you enjoy dinner, darling? Oh, it was delicious. Pierre outdid himself. How would you know? You scarcely touched your food. Eloise, if you must know, it's that silly statue. Can't we forget her finally, I hope? Ari, how do you account for it? You wouldn't believe a word I say. Oh, well, say it. In the old days, she was the center of an adoring, worshipping populace, right here. Every day, she was presented with gifts. And then, suddenly, it stopped. The old religion had died. And for nearly 2,000 years, she's been neglected. Suddenly, once again, she is given a gift. You can imagine that this one is more precious to her than anything in her history. And so, she refuses to give it up. Claude, darling... Of course, Henry is crazy, but he's only my cousin by marriage, so it doesn't run in the family. Well, it's, uh, it's rather late. I think I'll turn in. Good night, all. Good night. Yes, good night. Of course, you received my letter. That's why I came. I love you, Claude. I love you, too. I... But I want you to... Ask me. Oh, yes. Yes, I will. Oh, 
Well, I'm waiting. Uh, Louise, I... Claude, why are you so pale? I, I, I don't know. Are you ill? I feel very strange. How? As if... As if I hear music. Music? But there's no It's music. an unusual kind of music. I've never heard anything like it before. Claude. Claude. You belong to me. You have given me your ring. You belong to me. You belong to me. What did Claude do? Did he really awaken this sleeping goddess after so many centuries? Is there a goddess? Well, you can look at it any way you like, but the basic essential fact remains. The ring won't come off her finger. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't come off in Act Two either, which you will hear when I return shortly. To begin with, there is a huge bronze statue of Venus. And because a rather large ring was interfering with the way Claude Louis de Chabert gripped his tennis racket, he took off the ring. And because the statue offered a convenient resting place, he set the ring on its finger. And now it develops the ring can't come off. And the statue seems to have ideas of her own. belong to me, Lord Louis. You are mine. No other woman can ever have you. Claude. Claude? Hmm? Yes? Darling, something's wrong. I, I have a feeling... I'm going to call the doctor. Oh, no. But you're ill. No, I'm not ill. Darling... Please, get some rest. I'm sure you'll feel better in the morning. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. I'll, I'll just sit here for a few minutes and smoke a pipe. All right. Good night, Claude. Good night. My beloved, Claude Louis. My beloved. Who is that? Who's there? Claude, you will come with me. You will live with the gods. You will live like a god. Leave this house. Leave this foolish mortal woman. And come with me. No. Lord, I am the goddess of love. I am also the goddess of death. No, no, no. Let me alone. Well, good morning, darling. Good morning. I had to appear to prepare an especially delicious breakfast, so I do hope you're hungry. Ah, Mademoiselle Louise, Monsieur Claude. What is it, René? Monsieur Claude, you asked me to see about the ring. What ring? Oh, that ring. Uh, were you able to? The ring just won't come off. It's like um, fused to the metal. Oh, could that be possible somehow? No, sir. It is not possible unless you welded it on there, which you didn't. Well, then what's to be done? Nothing. Unless you want to cut the finger off. Oh, no, no. Uh, I am so tired of all this chatter about that silly ring. Oh, thank you, René. I appreciate what you've done. Uh, yes, Monsieur Claude. Good day. I tried my best. 
I'm sorry I bought that ridiculous statue. She's hardly ridiculous. And now you're starting to talk like Henri. I'm sorry. I keep asking myself, why did I have to fall in love with you? Because I'm charming and handsome. No, the sensible thing would have been to fall in love with Henri. Ah, darling, I'll go up and change and meet you at the tennis court. Listen, whoever you are, whatever you are, listen. I put that ring on your finger the way, well, the way you place a hat on a rack or a coat on a hook. I wasn't thinking of, well, I certainly didn't mean anything by it. So if this is all a practical joke, fine, the joke's on me. But, but if you really are a goddess and you're taking this seriously... What would you want with me, anyhow? You are my beloved. I'm, I'm trying to explain. I must marry Eloise Calvert. I have no choice. I am your bride. I will share you with no mortal woman. I will see you dead first. I... Didn't know you were in the habit of talking to yourself. Oh, Henri, what are you doing here? Eloise sent me. Her lawyer has just arrived from Paris. He has papers for her to sign. Oh. In anticipation of your coming marriage, she's having considerable property signed over to you. Oh. Something wrong with you this morning? Well, well yes, it, it... Well, it's that damn statue. Claude... I shouldn't say this. Shouldn't say what? I have good advice for you, even if it goes against my own interest. Please, forget about that statue. Forget? This whole affair about the ring and the mysterious fact that it won't come off is starting to frighten Eloise. Frightened? She doesn't like to be frightened. Well, who does? She's been fantastically rich all her life. She's always had everything she wanted by snapping her fingers. Except you. She's got me. No, not quite yet. Instinctively, you know how to treat her. You don't fall at her feet the way the rest of us do. You maintain a kind of reserve. That's because you know all about women. You flatter me. Even now, you're playing her to perfection. True, it's a formality, but... She wants that ritual declaration of love, that beautifully stated proposal of marriage, and you delay it exquisitely. But I came here to propose. You've already proposed to one goddess. Stop that, will you? The goddess of love. And now you intend to propose to another. Eloise, a goddess? Of course. The goddess of wealth and power. How fortunate. Each of these goddesses wants you as her consort. Oh, Henri, sometimes I wonder about your sanity. <laughs> That's just another way of saying that you wonder about your own. Why won't the ring come off? Well, there must be an explanation. Yes, there is. You're the fiancé of Venus. She won't give you up. I mean a rational explanation. It makes sense to me. And it also makes sense to you. You don't have to admit it. Well, I came here to propose to Eloise. Then why don't you do it? I will. I'll take her out to dinner tonight, and I'll ask her to marry me. Ah, oh, what a lovely place. A bit off the beaten track, darling. And the food. <laughs> I wanted a perfect setting. For what? For the most important statement of my life. <laughs> flatterer. Of course I'm a flatterer. And you love flattery. Doesn't every woman? Oh, I can see we're going to be a very straightforward couple. Yes. Eloise, I... Yes? I want to ask you to... I'm waiting... I, I... Your mind, Claude. 
You gave me your ring. But, but I told you... Claude, you may play with other women. You may deceive other women. But no man in the history of the world has ever deceived me and lived. I am Venus. I am Aphrodite. I am Astarte. I am Isis. I am Ishtar. But I only... Hundreds, thousands, numberless races of men on this planet have worshipped me under numberless names. And now... I choose you. I choose you, Claude Louis. You belong to me. You are mine. You must leave this woman. Claude. Uh, uh, I, I must be... Darling, something is wrong. No, I, I, I just feel very... Very what? See, you can't say. You don't know. But I know. Do you? I spoke to Dr. Legrand. He told me all about men like you. Men like me? Yes. It has to do with the fear of becoming a husband. But I have no fear of... Yes, yes, you do. Oh, you do. Way down, deep down in the subconscious where you're unaware of it. You're giving up the old, wild freedom. And you're just not sure you want to... Oh, but I, I am... Well, I intend to... to be patient. I love you. Ah, good evening, Claude. Oh, well, good evening, Monsieur Ormond. I was dining here with some associates, and uh, I thought I would come over to pay my respects. Oh, yes. Uh, darling, may I present Monsieur Ormond? I am honored, mademoiselle. Enchanté. Well, Claude, I had expected... Uh, yes? Apropos of our last discussion, I had expected a settlement uh, or a statement. Uh, yes, yes, I know. As a matter of fact, my associates were saying just now, why do you suppose we have not heard... Reassure your associates for me, monsieur, that, that everything is in order. Of course. So happy to have made your acquaintance, mademoiselle. Darling, what was he talking about? Oh, business proposition. Claude, Monsieur Armand, he's sitting at that table. Look, over to the right, you see? Oh, well, what about it? Well, look at those two men at the table with him. He called them his business associates. I suppose they are. Well, then I cannot imagine what sort of business he could be engaged in. Those two men are the worst-looking thugs I've ever seen in my life. Uh, now, darling, you shouldn't judge by appearance. They could be tender-hearted, church-going, devoted family oh, men. Oh, no. Hired killers would be more likely. Darling, take me home. I'm frightened. And she has every right to be frightened. We know why the ruthless and determined men want one million francs from our friend Claude Louis. If he marries Eloise, well, no problem. However, Claude Louis is becoming more and more convinced that he is already betrothed to the jealous goddess Venus herself. In which case, it would be fatal to jilt her. Decisions, decisions. The choice, however, must be made. And it will be when I return shortly with Act Three. How would you like to be in a position to choose between a goddess of earthly power and the goddess of heavenly love? You say you'd adore such a dilemma? Think again. Or better still, listen closely to the fate of the Vicomte Claude Louis de Chaubert. He happens to be in that precise predicament. Ah, good morning, Claude. Morning, Henri. 
You seem to have quite an appetite this morning. Well, they say the condemned man ate a hearty meal. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Have you seen Eloise? Oh, she's still asleep. Well, that's not like her. She's worried about you. Well, everything's all right. We can be married tomorrow if she wants. Oh, you've decided? Of course. And what about the other one? What other one? As if you don't know. I'm not sure I understand. The Venus, your own Venus deed. Oh, that. Well, let me tell you, I didn't sleep last night. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It was good for me. Henri, I did some thinking. And? And I called myself every stupid name I could remember. Why? If I keep this up, this, this groundless, mindless, idiotic fear or apprehension, if I keep imagining she talks to me, well, I can very well lose Eloise. Eloise is very much in love with you. Love. Love is an illusion. You fall in, you fall out. I can read women. This ring business is beginning to irritate her. Worse, it's starting to bore her. Ah, I've been warning you. What really happened? I needed a resting place for a ring. So I absently placed it on the finger of a statue. A lifeless metal statue. You follow me? You're telling the story. Due to some phenomenon that probably has a rational explanation, if we ever find it, the ring seems to adhere to the finger of the statue. Is that true? <laughs> Obviously, the ring's still there. But that's all that happened. Who said anything else? You did. Me? You. You're the one who invested the statue with all kinds of magic and mysterious qualities. Well, I, I was merely stating some facts. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But you have an ulterior motive. If you could get me upset, fire my imagination, perhaps, something might happen, and you could have Eloise for yourself. Well, I'm not aware that I've tried to upset you. No, not consciously, perhaps. Well, in any event, it's all over. And I certainly will not jeopardize my chance of becoming a billionaire because of an overactive imagination. Do you understand me? Yes. But I wish you'd be honest with yourself. You said you absently placed the ring on her finger. Is that really true? Or did you do it as a joke? Or did you, as millions of men before you actually fall in love with her. Oh, no, Ari. We're not having any more of that. Well, old girl, I must say it was exciting. It was even fun for a while. Venus deal. Ah, oh, you must have been something in your day. All woman. Oh, no. No, madame. I'm wise to these little tricks of the mind. Not this time. Not again. Claude. Of course, Claude. But you're in my head. You're part of my imagination. Claude, you belong to me. I belong to no one. I belong to myself. Foolish, Claude. Do you think you can fight me? You're just an image in my own brain. <laughs> Claude, you don't love Eloise. You're in love with love. Claude, I am love. I, I don't believe. Yes, Claude, you believe. You believe. The love I offer you is beyond dreams, beyond imagination. No. No, I'm not listening. A glorious love. No, please. Don't be frightened. Come with me. Live with me. Live like a god. A god. Live on love. No. You asked me, God. You gave me your ring. You wanted me. You always wanted me. Say it. No. Say it, Claude. Say the truth. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. Yes. Then come. Come with me. Now. Now. That's it. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. I know. I know how it happened. Lord. Uh. What are you doing standing out here and yelling like a maniac? It's another electrical storm. We'd better get inside. Oh, yes. Come, Claude. Now, now I know. What do you know? I know. I know why the ring is stuck on her finger. Oh, huh? do you? Is it so important after all? Oh, yes, it's important. Do you remember what Rene said? He said it looked as if the ring is fused to the metal. Well, look closely. Doesn't it appear that way? Well, what's the difference? He also said it was impossible unless you welded it on. And, of course, you didn't. No, I didn't. But someone else did. Who? Perhaps not a who, but a what. What did happen? We were playing tennis. I took the ring off, placed it on her finger. Well, we already know all that. Tell us the rest of it. You know the rest of it, too. Claude. Of course you do. We kept playing tennis, and then... And suddenly there was a, a, a peal of thunder, a flash of lightning. Well, don't you see? No. The lightning. It must have, it must have struck the statue in such a way as to refuse the ring to her finger. Well, that's impossible. No, no, it's not impossible. It could have happened. Well, then it answers the question, and finally settles the problem. It's the only way we can account for it. Unless... No, no, Henri, no more of these unlesses. So now, can we forget about oh, it? absolutely, my darling. Eloise, marry me. What? I said marry me. But I, I was expecting... You were expecting a romantic speech, poetry, sweet music, sparkling wine. Yes. Shall I try again? Oh, no. No, I accept. I accept. May I be the first to offer congratulations? Of course, of course, Henri. You fought a good fight. Ah, but the better man won. Eloise, my darling, may I... May I ask for a wedding present now? Oh, anything. Good. Would you... Could you... Get rid of this statue? <laughs> my rival? Well? Of course. We'll donate her to a museum. No, no. No, I mean get rid of her. How? Wow. Have her destroyed. Melted down. Oh? But Claude, she's priceless. Well, I... I'll have it taken care of tomorrow. Well, can it be done today? Well, yes. Rene will be back in the morning and... Oh, well, I, I suppose it'll be all right. He'll take care of her. First thing... Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. A uh, toast to the happy couple. Oh. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you all. Claude and I are so happy. Please, everybody, eat, drink, dance. Help us enjoy this, this glorious occasion. You look beautiful, my dear. Oh, I always dreamed of a night like this. Are you happy? Oh, yes. Completely? Yes. Dad, you... You look so thoughtful. Do I? Very. I'm only thinking of us. Only of us? My darling, in this whole wide world, there are only the two of us. But, Claude, is something the matter? You're frowning. I wasn't aware... You're not ill. No, no, of course not. You don't look very comfortable. Oh, well, perhaps it's a bit close in here. I may just need a breath of fresh air. Oh, I'll go with you. No, no, dear. We both can't leave our guests. I'll just step outside for a moment. It'll do me good. Claude. Claude Louis. No, no. You what won't you believe? I won't believe you are there. You have dared to trifle with the heart of a goddess. I don't know what you're saying. I offered you my love. I would have given myself to you. I've got to fight this. 
I am not mad. I've got to fight. Of all the uncounted millions since the very beginning of the human race, I offered myself to you. I accept this as an hallucination. Fool! Look at me! Look at me! No. It can't be. It can't be. You... You're human. You... You're flesh and blood. You're a woman. Yes. A woman. A woman spurned. A woman scorned. I didn't know. How was I to know? I told you. I told you. Forgive me. Please forgive me. Forgive you? Come to my arms. Embrace me. Know what you might have had. And know what you have lost forever. I love you. I love you. Oh. Oh. Please. Please. You, you're, you're crushing me. You love me. Only die for the love of you. No, please. Let me, let me love you. Let me go. No, no. Help. Help. Claude. Claude, where are you? Eloise is worried about... Claude? Oh, no. Don't come close, Eloise. Don't look, Eloise. Don't. The statue, it fell on him. He's... Yes. He's dead. <gasps> the statue just crushed him. Oh, he... Oh, he look. What is it? Look at the ring. That ring. I don't see the ring. Look! Where? On... Claude's finger. Oh. The ring is back on Claude's finger. Well, you have a choice. You can believe that the goddess Venus fell in love with Claude, became angry when he jilted her, and killed him. Or you can believe that he went out for a walk and the rain had softened the statue's foundation, and it just fell on him. There were also the enforcers. All the ingredients are there for a provocative stew. Use what you like, and stir to your taste. I'll be back shortly. The tale you just heard was concerned primarily with love. And why not? Love, like murder, is filled with suspense, chills, thrills, fears, uncertainty. And even better, there is a body of evidence to prove that love is far more healthy and satisfying than murder. And so, if ever you feel driven, why, just fall in love instead. Our cast included Norman Rose, Joan Lovejoy, Evie Juster, Dan Ockel, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>